Hi there, my name is Hilary Simon, Colorectal Research Fellow at Columbia University Medical Center in New York. Today I present the incidence and risk factors for venous thromboembolism across open and minimally invasive surgical platforms for inflammatory bowel disease. I have nothing to disclose, nor do the other authors. We receive no financial support or funding. Venous thromboembolic disease, or VTE, is a relatively rare but serious postoperative complication. Um, and furthermore, increased number of VTE cases have been reported with high fatality rates at first occurrence, which makes preventative me measures for such essential. Inflammatory bowel disease patients have an even higher risk. And on top of that, considering intraoperative positioning, pelvic dissection, and an intrinsic inflammatory process in general puts them at an even higher risk. Because of these reasons, extended VTE pharmacologic prophylaxis has been recommended. However, no guidelines have considered the surgical approach in these recommendations. What we do know is there are proven benefits with MIS. Laparoscopy has, been or has previously been reported having a lower association with VTE and IBD per um, Shapiro et al. And um, knowing that MIS provides shorter length of stay, lower morbidity, mortality, cost, plus that it's safe and feasible in IBD patients, um, uh, making it an interesting point to study based on our, our cohort. No study to date has assessed the impact of MIS on VTE and included the robotic approach, which we have here. Our goal was to compare the incidence of VTE rates across open and MIS platforms and to also identify risk factors related to VTE by surgical approach and elective colorectal surgery for IBD. We hypothesized minimally invasive surgery is associated with lower VTE rates and that we could identify modifiable risk factors for VTE development in the IBD population. We assessed the ACS NISQIP from 2012 to 2016 for adult patients with Crohn's or ulcerative colitis who had elective surgery for IBD either via an open or MIS approach. MIS was defined as laparoscopic and robotic. They were both evaluated together as an MIS variable and separately. We evaluated patient and provider demographics, intervention, and outcome variables across VTE development and approach. Our main outcome measures were rate of VTE by surgical platform and factors predicted of postoperative VTE development. We used descriptive statistics within our univariable analysis and a multivariant logistic regression investigated the relationship between surgical approach and VTE risk after adjusting for the for confounding factors listed here. Our cohort after exclusion criteria was over 6,000 patients, the majority being Crohn's patients. Um, of those patients, the majority underwent minimally invasive surgery, 70.8% undergoing laparoscopic. Sorry. Um, 90, over 96% undergoing laparoscopic. In regards to VTE incidence, overall it was a 1.9% incidence, 1.7% uh, of patients developed VTE, and 0.4% developed uh, PE. In regards to surgical platform, 1.6% um, occurred after open surgery and 2.1% uh, occurred after MIS. However, after stratifying for MIS, um, the lowest incidence of VTE was found in the robotic approach at 1.2%. Open and MIS approach was found to have um, significantly differed by patient and provider demographics. The MIS approach had more female, more moderate and severe comorbidities, and more preoperative steroid use. However, the open approach had greater morbidity and mortality. When um, evaluated separately, laparoscopic and robotic um, platforms were similar by patient and provider demographics, except they differed by median operative time. The robotic approach was longer at me a median 196 minutes. We developed a model to assess um, a patient's risk of developing a VTE, and the significant factors are listed here. Of note, age, BMI, smoking, bleeding disorder, operative time, and surgical approach, MIS compared to open, were not independently associated with VTE development. A second model was developed to compare um, and adjust for laparoscopic versus robotic. Significant factors are listed here. 
With this model, we added a unique analysis to the literature as controlling for the MIS approach. With this, BMI and bleeding disorder became significant risk factors for VTE development and preoperative steroid use was no longer significant. Of note, surgical approach was not a significant risk factor. Overall, in conclusion, we found a VTE risk of approximately 2% in IBD patients. Um, laparoscopy carried a higher VTE risk than open, albeit not significant, and we found that robotics trended towards the lowest risk at 1.2% VTE. Risk factors were identified, um, certain including UC, preoperative steroid use, longer length of stay, reoperation, and readmission. This agrees with prior work. However, our study was the first to recognize unplanned readmission as a risk factor of VTE and IBD. While significant association in the adjusted analysis, unplanned readmission is more likely a marker of sicker patients rather than a predictor of postoperative VTE. And knowledge of this association could facilitate identification of high-risk patients for earlier intervention. Also from our analysis, risk factors were identified and could be modified or risk stratified to potentially impact the incidence, diagnosis, and early treatment of VTE and IBD patients. Among these are preoperative counseling and UC and preoperative steroid use, optimizing BMI and bleeding disorders, and an application of ERAS protocols in IBD cases to potentially reduce complications, reoperations, and readmissions. This is essential as there are discrepancies in recommendations for VTE prophylaxis cost effectiveness in high risk patient populations. Now, aside from that, despite the large sample size provided by the multi year national NISQIP data, there was a relatively small sample size of VTE incidents and even smaller cohorts of laparoscopic and robotic patients, which likely impacted our results. So, while not significant in our models, the VTE risk did trend towards favoring robotics with laparoscopic having the highest risk. Ultimately, an international collaboration to increase the sample size of IBD, VTE patients across MIS approaches and IBD subtypes would have the potential to draw powerful, powerful conclusions and are needed.